Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Steve Lynn, and I am the Director of Marketing here at Blaze. And welcome to our webinar on how to use data-driven marketing to increase sales. Now, we're heading into the holiday season, so we wanted to share a few ways that dispensaries can use data to identify trends, design their promotions, and optimize inventory to really capitalize on the influx of traffic online and in-store. Uh, with that said, let's introduce our panelists. Today, I'm joined with none other than Blaze Chief Product Officer, Kai Kirk. And even though Kai is an integral part of designing our software, this might be his first time as a webinar panelist. Kai, would you uh, like to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about your background in cannabis and technology and how you came to Blaze? Yeah, sure. Um, go a little easy on me. It's my first time here, right? Um, I joined Blaze about five years ago. Uh, in a prior life, uh, before cannabis, I was in tech. Um, started out my career in tech, uh, and as I moved along, I kind of fell into the cannabis industry, um, like a number of us, uh, about seven years ago, uh, and I was working in the cultivation and distribution space. Um, realized there were some tech problems that needed to be solved, and uh, decided to work on those about five years ago and join Blaze and the Blaze team when they, we were a small team of about five, and now I've also got a... Um, manufacturing brand out of New Mexico. So, uh, you know, a number of us who are here at Blaze are current or former operators. We uh, we love the industry and uh, we want to keep moving it forward and just want to build great tech. Awesome. Uh, well, our guest panelist today is a CEO of Happy Cabbage Analytics and a cannabis data wizard, Andrew Watson. Yeah, I just mind sharing a bit about yourself, a little bit about how the Blaze and Happy Cabbage integration came to be. I'd love to hear about that origin story. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, as Steve said, I'm Andrew Watson, CEO and one of the founders of Happy Cabbage Analytics. Uh, Happy Cabbage Analytics, we are very focused on using the data in your point of sale system and helping you optimize your inventory and maximize the sell through of that inventory with targeted marketing uh, technology, right? Uh, a little bit about how came to space. So by way of background, I was a data scientist by trade, uh, doing work uh, in the healthcare space, also work at Salesforce for a few years, uh, really got drawn to the industry uh, a lot due to the fact that POS, like Blaze, uh, is an absolute gold mine of data and information when it comes to automation of engagement with consumers, automation of a lot of the retail tasks, essentially. Uh, and as a data scientist, that was really appealing to me. So uh, early on, got started in the industry, uh, calling up retailers, trying to work with them and found Blaze's name in California, all over the place. We were started out of the Bay Area, got to know Chris a little bit and, um, you know, built our first integration. I think now uh, it must have been like three years ago, uh, more than three years ago. And, you know, are really, really, really a uh, solid partnership. Um, Blaze is just a great system when it comes to having a complete profile of your members, a complete profile of your sales that can let you do a lot of the very clever and very powerful things that uh, our integration lets you do, which we'll go over a little bit today. Awesome. High praise there from Andrew. Uh, well, thanks for being with us. Let's get started. Um, I just quickly want to mention a little bit about the expanding Blaze software suite. Uh, we recently added Blaze apps in addition to Blaze Ecom. Uh, this basically provides an easy and affordable way for dispensaries to create a native mobile app that allows customers to browse their menu, pay for products, and earn rewards each time they shop. Uh, and we'll cover a bit more about the marketing opportunities that Blaze apps offers just in, in a bit. But I do want to mention that we will be adding a new product to our suite in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. And this is all part of our goal to provide retailers with valuable tools that streamline operations, increase their sales, and help them expand their business. Uh, now I'm just going to pass it over to Andrew just to cover a bit more about Happy Cabbage and their offerings. Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, we provide essentially a toolkit for retailers to help them optimize inventory and maximize the sell-through of that. Uh, through integrating with that data, using data science technology like machine learning and AI type of stuff that we've built uh, that can help with uh, bud tender enablement through our tool happy bud tenders, marketing, which we'll be talking about a lot today through our tool happy marketers, operators to understand their business through our tool happy operators, and then uh, buyers to make data informed procurement decisions with our tool happy buyers, right? So uh, very focused on how can we take that data and using automation uh, essentially make the jobs and lives easier and make revenue overall easier for retailers. Awesome. 
Well, let's dive into the run of show. Um, first, we'll be talking about the marketing KPIs that every retailer needs to track, uh, followed by ways to optimize, optimize your marketing channels. And we'll discuss how to identify your most successful promotions and design those, um, how to engage customers, how to use data to optimize inventory. And after that, we'll dive into a demo to show you how to access and use the data uh, with the Blaze and Happy Cabbage integration. Now, following the live demo, we will have a brief Q&A to answer any questions that you may have that come up during the webinar. So feel free just to drop them in the Q&A at any point during the webinar. We'll circle back to them at the end. Um, with that said, I'm just going to pass it over to Andrew and let's get started. Let's talk about these essential marketing KPIs. Yeah, thanks. So um, KPIs, key performance indicators uh, are massive when it comes to understanding and simplifying the focus of your business, right? Uh, they're numbers essentially that you want to make sure that you're looking at and talking about anytime that you're having a conversation about a business initiative or something you're trying to do going into the holiday season, you're, if you're talking about marketing, every conversation you have, you need to be including your KPIs in that conversation, right? Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, some various KPIs, which are important to track. Mobile website traffic, massive. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more on the Blaze side at Blaze Ecom, how that helps with that. Marketing ROI, marketing return on investment. Essentially, for every dollar you're spending in marketing, how many dollars back are you seeing in data-driven sales, right? Like, uh, this is huge, right? Don't just go spend $10,000 on a marketing thing and have no idea how much money it made you. There is enough data in Blaze to know the answer to every single marketing initiative you've done, how much money you made doing that, right? Um, customer recapture. This is also really big. Uh, where we're at with the maturity of the industry at this moment is the vast majority of all of the customers who are the best customers for your business have already shopped at your store, right? Um, knowing who has shopped and then fallen off, right? Who are those people who came in every you know month and then it's been over 90 days since they last come in? How many of those every month are you bringing back? Uh, understanding how much of your traffic is actually converting to orders, right? And then finally, I'll tease a little bit of thing about set yourself targets, right? Set yourself targets with KPIs and we'll talk a little bit about a very simple way that you can do that. Awesome. Cool. So diving in a little bit into that marketing ROI piece, which I teased, uh, here's just some like kind of views from some of the integration stuff that we have with Blaze. Um, it's super important for you to know for a marketing initiative that you're doing, how much money are you getting back in that, right? So on the left here, you can see kind of just like an example of, for example, on let's say it's a text messaging campaign, right? How many customers have you reached? How many campaigns have you sent? how many of those messages got through to those customers, and then very importantly, how many of those customers were lost, came back into the store, how much money did they spend? But then also looking at it as like, hey, my goal with this campaign was to maximize, you know, I send a message out and then people come in within 24 hours. Well, then let's look at that number, right? Maybe your goal is to just overall smooth out sales across the week. So you're looking at a seven day number, right? Maybe your goal is to acquire new customers through an investment in a marketplace, for example, right? Well, if you know you spent over the course of a year, you know, $100,000 in a marketplace spend, uh, you can really quickly look up and know, okay, I made, you know, in this example, this is a real live data example, $200,000 this year through that expense, right? And then you have to ask yourself, am I getting the trade-off, right? Uh, if I'm spending this amount of money and I'm getting this amount back, Am I getting those trade-offs? And it's so important to be able to dig in and, and find that out, right? Um, you can do this with simple tools like our integration. You can do it more complicated ways if you would like by just even digging into raw data and just picking out orders. But, um, you know, I would say if you find yourself frustrated with the amount that you're spending in marketing and not knowing how much you're getting back, this is a huge area with which you can use to start to rationalize that. Uh, digging in a little bit into that customer recapture. Uh, so this is a point that we're going to be hammering on a lot throughout this. Uh, for cannabis retail, every single person who comes into that store, who comes into that website, who makes that order, you know who they are in the member data in Blaze, right? Which means that if someone 
has been a regular shopper. They were buying every 20 days, which they do objectively on average buy every 20 days. They're spending, you know, good, high average ticket size. Uh, they were loyal for years and then they disappeared, right? It's not like randomly all of these people have stopped consuming cannabis. They've gone to a competitor, right? Um, constantly being in communication and using that data to identify who they are and going back to them, right? This is an example of uh, a great Blaze Happy Cabbage customer, MMD down here in Southern California, right? You know, they've started to do recapture campaigns through email marketing. You know, they're bringing back hundreds of customers, right? Who were regular customers who hadn't been back in store in over 90 days, spending $21,000 in a month, right? Uh, over at that store. This is easily the biggest bang for your buck when you're talking about where you spend the dollars on marketing. I would definitely be looking at this before you're really trying to spend a ton of money on like marketplaces, billboards, new customer acquisition type of top uh, stuff like that. And then really quickly, I was talking about benchmarking. A lot of this is also set goals, right? So if you're saying, hey, I'm going to spend $10,000 in marketing, right? Well, okay. How much money do you expect that to come back? That's what we just talked about there on the benchmarking side, or, or sorry, on the ROI side. But part of it is also like, you know, Green Wednesday's coming up and you want to spend money and you want to organize your business to target a total amount of sales that you want to get on Green Wednesday. Well, having an understanding of how much sales you are likely to get on Green Wednesday by benchmarking your own data is a really good place to start, which then can help you start to rationalize, well, how much money should I be spending on promotions to get to that, right? A super simple benchmarking technique, which is really easy to do, is pick a holiday. So let's take Green Wednesday, and this is some real live data, example data from uh, some anonymized data. Um, take last year's Green Wednesday sale. So in this example, you know they made $28,000 last Green Wednesday. Um, Take your year over year growth from last month, right? So, you know, market may be down overall in certain places, market may be up overall in certain places. So, based on how October did versus of October of last year, what is that growth rate, right? In this example, this store unfortunately has been down about 20% year over year. Apply that to your Green Wednesday number, and now you have a target, right? You have a target amount where baseline. If I just did as well as I did in October for Green Wednesday, this is the amount of money I should expect to make. And then set something bigger than that. Go after something bigger than that and try to rationalize how you're thinking and looking. You know, print this number out, take a black marker, write it up on the board in the back room, right? Each holiday, each month, what the number should be and track yourself towards that. And that's how you're really going to help focus and make sure that you're not just throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. Awesome. Let's hand it over to Kai. Let's talk about omni-channel optimization here. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, all right, first we're going to dig into uh, the importance of owning your own space on the web, SEO, and, um, and kind of how marketplaces perform. Uh, then we're going to let Happy Cabbage chat a bit about uh, marketplace retargeting, uh, how you can make the most on what you've spent on your marketplace spends, um, text marketing, and really the importance of segmentation of your text marketing, uh, and then email marketing, uh, and you know the value that's there in email. It's uh, it's cheap, <laughs> and it's um it's a it's a great value to to get out there. And then push notifications. We're not going to dig too much into that, but um, I do want to touch on that. Uh, you know, Steve mentioned Blaze apps. And that's our um, ability for you to have your own Blaze or your own store branded app, right? That your consumers can shop with, identify with your store and your brand. And through there, you can actually send unlimited push notifications for marketing, um, you know, automated order updates and all sorts of things like that. So it's really convenient way to uh, get that data out to them and a cheap way and also um, allow them to continue um, purchasing through your store and your brand and using a native seamless checkout to, to buy the products they need. So um, getting into SEO, you know, some really interesting stats here that the, um, you know, as a, where do people click, right? When they're going and seeing the search results, uh, you probably know this as well, right? You go search Google and you kind of look at the first three. You often ignore the top paid result because you're like, that's an ad. 
And um, so uh, the top three search results get over two thirds, about 68% of all clicks on Google. So if you're not sitting up there in the top three, um, you're probably getting passed over and somebody else is getting that search result. The number one result on average gets 19 times more clicks than the uh, the top paid result. So that shows you that the value of <laughs> paying for that ad isn't as good as getting up there and having great SEO. Um, and then the number one result um, gets more clicks than results four through 10 combined. So that just once again, being in the top three is just uh, crucial. Um, here we go a little bit more on just kind of um, the value of having that brand um, and having that organic search. Uh, this is looking at um, just a, a sample dispensary that we have, and you can see on their search data, over half of their traffic is coming um, from organic search. That's from Google, that's from Bing, that's from any of the major search engines that someone's just typing in, I wanna find, you know, whatever, Sizzy pre-rolls, Sacramento. And guess who comes up first? You know, Blaze Ecom site. And that's gonna be above the marketplaces and stuff like that. And that drives that traffic. Um, if you don't have, you know, an SEO optimized store, um, if you don't even have a store of your own out there, you're kind of giving up about 50% of your uh, of your potential traffic on the web, right? Uh, so it's very, very important, once again, to, to have that, that placement out on the web. Um, here's just uh, another way of kind of looking at the marketplaces and how they're performing. If you take a look here, you can see Leafly back in June 2021, 13.9 million um, people hitting that. In June of this year, 8.2. They're down 58%, right? These are the big marketplaces you're relying on if you're using marketplaces. Uh, Weed Maps, there you go, 5.9 million, down to 2.6 million. Um, so, you know, then you can take a look at these brands down here, these big names, and see they're all growing. Uh, even Stizzy, who does not have a very optimized website, is growing. Uh, while these guys are falling. And it's because Google loves local results. They want to see, you know, that that result is a location that's sitting near you or near the uh, city you searched. And they're going to show that above a marketplace. Um, they also value the shopping experience and having good imagery, good description and all of that stuff. So big part about Blaze Ecom is making sure you really have that super optimized website and um, you're going to show up higher uh, than these marketplaces or than iframes. A lot of retailers are, had used these iframe insets on their websites they had from Weed Maps and Leafly and Jane and stuff like that. And those just don't perform at all for SEO. So um, as people start to ditch those and actually get native sites, uh, they're ranking higher. Um, so this one, I know this may be a little bit hard to see, but you can just take a look at the call outs on the left, but you have a, a search for Stizzy Biscotti Sacramento here, right? And as an example, when you do this search, the first two that come up are Blaze Ecom sites, just because they are SEO optimized. Then you have yourself a little Dutchy, a little Leafly, um, and then another Blaze Ecom that's probably, yeah, that's one of our newer ones. So they're still working their way up the ranking. And then actually you have Stizzy down there. <laughs> with their native website. That is not a Blaze Ecom site. Um, when they come to Blaze Ecom, I can promise you they'll be right on top. <laughs> so um, once again, just shows you how these marketplaces perform versus native sites. Um, <clears throat> another fun trend that we looked at is in our metrics is that people just spend more online. So the average order value of a cart online uh, last quarter was $90. I don't know what your average order is in store, but I can promise you this is probably a lot larger than that. Um, unless you're in New York City, it might be okay. But um, for our store in New York City, their average order value online is uh, is about uh, well over $100 for some of our stores out there. Um, but prepaid AOV was $122. So that's 20, that that right there is 35% higher, but it ranges from 25 to, to almost 50% higher for people who prepay online. Um, prepaid online also means a lot less canceled orders. Um, and, you know, New York has a requirement that orders have to be prepaid if they're coming in online. And there was a lot of apprehension about, oh man, we're going to lose customers. But really at the end of the day, everybody's used to paying and prepaying for a product online. It's, it's, um, cannabis is one of the few last ones where I can have a cash on, you know, a COD or go cash on pickup. So, um, 
people when that's their only option are doing it and they end up having a much higher cart. So definitely something to consider and definitely make sure you have online payments enabled and front and center for your customers. And uh, yeah, with that, let me pass it on over to Andrew for marketplace retargeting. Yeah. So this is talking about, you know, moving down the funnel a bit, you know, once you've gotten your site optimized, once you're getting this traffic in, once you're getting that and you're getting customers to the doors, what are strategies with which you are re-engaging, bringing them back, going back to the customer recapture stuff that I was talking about here? Um, one thing that was great to show off uh, there in those metrics is marketplaces are down, right, on overall traffic. Objectively, they are, as Google loves local results, as people are getting better at SEO. A lot of people spent a lot of money on marketplaces back in like 2021, 2022, um, and through that money that was spent, those customers came into those stores, those customers were acquired, and through Blaze's integrations with those e-commerce or those marketplace providers, um, you know who those are, right? Uh, you know, this is an example of, you know, looking at all a few years of data for uh, a store, and you can see that, uh, you know, they had 5,100 total customers come in through Weed Maps but only 2,500 total customers repurchase, right, in total, right? And you can see the bulk of that came in in 2021, right? An incredibly important strategy that I would say is if you spent all of that money at some point in time, make some of that money back, continue to make some of that money back by just retargeting those folks with text message promotions, with email promotions, right? Uh, even ripping lists of them and like going after them and trying to understand who they are in a much bigger way is going to be huge, right? It is a simple tactic that you can just be running passively in the background to bringing back those customers that you already spent money to acquire, right? And you can actually focus those channels specifically on that, building discount codes and things like that specifically for those channels of customers. Going on talking about it. So I mentioned test, text message marketing. There's a lot of like noise out there, I would say overall about the data around text message marketing right now. And so what I wanted to do here is sort of baseline and really talk about the data on the current efficacy of the channel that we're seeing through our customer bases using the tool and strategies around how to make it even more effective, right? Uh, on it overall, right? So with text message marketing, a big thing is spam filtering, right? Carriers block cannabis-related content, block messages uh, overall, right? Um, a big thing is how many of those messages are getting through. A lot of times people evaluate value as like what percent of those messages are getting through and what percent aren't. So here's some like real data from just across our client base for uh, so far through November. I think this data is through November 14th, where you can see that 58% of customers we're working with get a, between a 75% and 100% delivery rate. 20% of the customers get between a 50 and 75% delivery rate. And then we do have customers who are between 11 and 50% and the zero to 10% delivery rate. And those are the customers we spend a ton of time with to try to encourage and work on the best practices, which I'll go through in a second, that help bring that delivery rate back up. But what's also super important, and this goes to the point on segmentation and using your data to intelligently segment, is that just because you have a high delivery rate does not necessarily mean you're actually making a lot of money through this channel, right? If you look at those customers I just described and just in the first 14 days of November, how many recaptures they brought in through the strategy, you can see that basically between 50% of their messages getting through and 100% of their messages getting through, on average, you're getting about so far this month, 30 regular customers per store coming back in who didn't shop in the previous 90 days, right? In total dollars attributed within 24 hours of sending that campaign, you can see folks who have been doing a 50 and 75% delivery rate so far this month, about $15,000 in attributed sales. And folks who have between 75 and 100% have a $19,000 attributed sales. The reason why this isn't twice this, the reason why when you double your delivery rate, you're not necessarily doubling your ROI, has a lot to do with the fact that it's the segmentation work, mass ma matching the right message to the right audience that actually yields both higher delivery rate and higher ROI, materially higher ROI, 
right? I would love it if people who are getting 100% delivery rate uh, were getting twice the ROI of people getting 50%, but it's not necessarily true, right? And a lot of that has to do with, because the, there's a lot of folks getting great delivery rates who have still further to go when it comes to optimizing the messaging that they're getting to the correct audience. So let's talk about that for a second. So here are some just best practices around both maximization of that ROI as well as maximization of that deliver rate overall. Number one, smaller segments have higher ROI and have higher pass-through rates, throughput rates, right? In general, what we see is if you're messaging about a segment of less than a thousand people at the time, getting to that segment is gonna get that message through to them and you're gonna get a good conversion rate on that message too. Why? Well, when you're trying to cut your population down into those types of segments, using your member data. So, you know, like the example we just went over in terms of like leveraging, like did they previously purchase through a marketplace, right? As a way to target them helps you also start to tailor the message to the audience, right? Focusing on a specific brand, focusing on a specific product category, focusing on a specific order size, right? Those are the types of things that yield really high results and are the things that the people are doing who are getting, you know, $18,000 per store so far this year, uh, sorry, sorry, so far this month in ROI through our platform. A great resource for that, by the way, is ChatGPT, right? We have a direct integration into it, which can help uh, do some keywords and start to cycle the messaging up. If you don't use us, but you're still trying to like, you know, get some new messages, come up with ideas of content, it's a great resource <laughs> to be able to drop stuff in and stick stuff back, back out. Another big thing is just stop texting everyone every day. If your strategy is you are messaging everyone every day, that strategy will not work. It will drive your delivery rate to zero and it will drive your ROI to zero. And that is a statistical fact. Um, what we see is that if you're messaging the same person more than seven times in a month, uh, basically the eighth text is trash, right? Uh, the ROI basically dips down to almost zero as you're messaging more and more and more, right? Uh, Images have higher throughput overall. Longer messages with natural language describing the offer are always better than shorter messages with abbreviations, typos, intentional typos. Just all of that is basically in the past, right? Uh, explaining, hey, we miss you. We would like you to come back to the store. If you show this text in store, you can get an offer through a discount code that we've created. Hey, we miss you. One of your favorite brands is on sale with a buy one, get one, right? If you use this, you come on to the website, you can do that. The other thing to see is that using complicated URLs is getting blocked, but you can do, you know, yourstore.com, yourstore.org, whatever, and it's fine, right? We're seeing people get plenty of fine delivery rates by just doing the name of their store.com and sending them to their uh, page uh, as well. So spend some time here just going through a few of these, these things because I know there's a lot of questions out there, but I do want to categorically state that if you follow best practices, you will be getting high ROI, very high ROI, right? For not that much spend, and you're going to be getting your messages through to the right audience at the right time. The member data is the unlock there, right? Email. Turns out that at the same, all the things I just said there apply here too, right? Uh, if you're going to be doing a, a text messaging uh, marketing campaign, right, to a segment, just also do an email one to the same segment. In general, what we're seeing is that you have about twice as many email addresses as you have phone numbers to be able to access at any given time. Um, email campaigns are great when it comes to this like recapture targeting strategy, right? Here are some real results from campaigns, right? Where you can see that are specifically going after lost customers, specifically going after latent customers who have been targeted based on how many times they ordered previously and their average ticket size. And you can see per campaign, right? They're getting back things like anywhere from, you know, over the course of the week, six to 15 customers who are coming back in from the email campaign, spending $1,000 at the store, right? Those then, because they were already great customers, are going to be coming back in as regular customers overall. On our side, we actually don't charge at all for sending new emails. Uh, it is incredibly 
low cost, so you might as well just be doing it sort of thing. What we see is that long newsletters take a lot of time and a lot of money to put together. And they're just not as effective as these targeted segments. You should still do the newsletters, but make sure you're augmenting it with the simple targeted messaging as well. A simple, clear call to action to a very simple and clear audience, right? Jeter discounts for Jeter consumers. Recapture discounts for lost consumers, right? Dab deals for dabbers, right? Like it's just very specific and very simple and it's gonna get your numbers up by orders of magnitude. Awesome, let's talk about uh, identifying popular promotions. Yeah, so what I would say here is um, like we were talking about in terms of the various different channels, um, Blaze has a great amount of functionality to be developing even more of like the personalized discounts, right? Uh, so discount types and things that actually match the audience that you're actually trying to go after, right? So first time customer discounts, right? BOGO customer discounts. We were just talking about Jeter, right? Uh, being able to run that, then matching that to that audience. Product bundles, that's a big thing going into the holidays. A lot of people have like these larger bundles, being able to put those together, mix and match. We do see that, like for example, uh, in California, Alien Labs and Connected, I know they do a lot of mix and match deals. You talk to Alien Labs and Connected consumers, about Alien Labs connected mix and match deals, you're gonna be making money <laughs> on those customers going back to the store. It is just a fact. I've seen it throughout the data sets that we've looked at overall. Blaze has a ton of functionality in letting you be able to design a lot of those and you can communicate about those. Now, one thing I would say, measure the efficacy, right? Uh, I will say that discounting, you know, in a world in which you know, uh, your discount is your hammer, every problem's a nail type of thing. <laughs> Sometimes you can find yourself trying to push a discount to everything, right? Sometimes you could say, I'm just gonna use a discount as my lever to drive volume. It is very easy to go into your data and say, hey, if my big promotion for Green Wednesday is gonna be my Jeter promotion, when was the last time you did a Jeter promotion? Just go in and see when you did that promotion, what was the sales up with? This is real data from a promotion from a store on Blaze in January who did a 25% off Jeter sale with a targeted campaign to Jeter consumers. And you can see that really did pull a lot of demand forward, right? They went from selling three and a half K of Jeter per day to 12 K of Jeter per day and then back down to three K. If you open this and you did that and you don't see any uplift, then consider promoting a different product, right? And it's super simple, super direct. It does not take a lot of time to be able to look up that kind of information. And it's gonna save you potentially thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars that day, if you get it wrong. Cool. All right, let's talk about how to increase lifetime value. Yeah, so uh, honestly, some of this is a bit of, you've been hearing us like weave it through and talk about it throughout. Um, knowing who that regular customer is, is so incredibly important. Creating segments about those regular customers and continuously continue to communicate with those regular customers, right? Giving them personalized discounts, letting them join rewards programs. Uh, if you go to the next slide really quickly, I have some of the points on this. Uh, I'm going to skip to the very bottom of this. Your regular customer is your best champion, Right. Uh, they're coming back every 20 days. They are spending 125% more on average. They're spending $2,300 a year, right? Word of mouth is going to be heavy in being able to continue to drive your business, getting referral programs up and running for these regular customers, finding who they are, targeting them with advertising about, hey, we have a referral program, right? Is so important and so key. And knowing who they are through your member data is also important and key. Just assuming all your regular customers are going to want to know about your concentrates deal is unfortunately a way to burn those regular customers off from your communication channels, right? Regular customers tend to be brand promiscuous, right? So they tend to shop uh, several brands over the course of the year, but category dependent. They tend to have a very strong, very specific category, whether it be edibles, whether it be concentrates, whether it be flour that they're purchasing from. Um, 
a huge value add that we've seen uh, with folks who are leveraging our tech uh, in conjunction with the Blaze integration with the mobile app, right? With the Blaze Ecom mobile app. Getting your regular customers onto your mobile app is a great way to make sure that you continue to retain them, right? Focusing advertising efforts onto the regular customers to get those customers onto the mobile app is a great way to focus your efforts, right? Instead of trying to message every single customer every single day about getting a mobile app and not getting your message through, right? Finding who your regular customers are and targeting them with messaging and content about, hey, get on the mobile app, right? Um, is gonna be very effective in keeping those customers retained overall, right? And that, let me, real quick yeah, on that, yeah, Andrew, yeah. Like it's, it's um, you know, the mobile app, it's it's so easy to get to, to get downloaded and installed, right? Once you're on that, you can have, um, you know, QR code sitting in front of the register. The bud tender can be like, hey, go ahead and download the mobile app and log in real quick and show me and I'll apply this promo, right? And you can set up a, a mobile app promo in your system that can only be used one time per customer for say like 20% off. And that 20% is cheap compared to what you're gonna get in return value from that customer, right? And then you can run those reports on your bud tenders to see how much they're pushing your mobile app, right? And see who ran that promo code. So there's a lot of really good data to, to help convert those people over to the mobile app and keep pushing them and get them into that push ecosystem. And, and have them be able to be like, you know what, I can just order on my phone and go pick up, right? Or order for delivery or, or whatever the, the method may be. Um, so very, very important. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, cannot emphasize enough, um, they are the lifeblood of your business, right? Uh, do what you can to know who they are and push them into being as engaged as possible. Cool. All right, let's optimize some inventory. <laughs> so this is the last piece uh we've kind of been going through a lot of stuff this is just one thing want to just like tee up as like a thing to be aware of that is a large and um material problem i would say in the industry at large uh is really understanding you should be selling out of your inventory at least at the level of the terms that you're getting from the distributor right um, the distributor saying, hey, I need it all paid back within 14 days, 30 days, 90 days. Selling through all that gives you the cash to be able to do that, right? Uh, what we are seeing is that holding excess inventory, right, is basically this massive cudgel, massive weight, massive anchor on the balance sheet that is holding the whole business, in, right? Because it ties you up in more AP. It ties up your ability to be able to have more cash flow going through the business to be able to get better terms with distributors, right? And all of that kind of stuff. Identifying what that inventory is and then targeting it for discount and promotion to get it to move faster is so important, right? A dollar today is much better than a dollar 120 days from now, right? Particularly when Getting those dollars in today and getting that good relationship with the distributor can let you get those better terms on better margins, right, as the inventory is flowing through the store, right? And just some quick KPIs on this. Go to the next slide. Um, this is just looking at averages across the data sets that we have. Uh, basically, the average cannabis shop stocks between 300 and 750 SKUs. I would say if you are stocking over 750 SKUs per store, you are likely causing your own inventory to start to move slower through cannibalizing your own sales, right? In a world in which there are case packs that exist, and you can only order in case packs of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever it is, as you have thousands of SKUs and your demand is fixed, you're essentially creating an own overstock problem, right? And so I would definitely say, Understanding how many SKUs you have and focusing on reducing that number overall to a more manageable number is key. On average, you should know that about 10% of all units on your shelf, what we see will not sell out within 30 days. And that tends to make up about 20% of all dollar value on the shelf because those things tend to be more expensive overall. On average, that's about $71,000 of retail value that you have in overstocked inventory about $35,000 of wholesale value, that's not going to sell in the next 30 days, right? In a world in which a lot of people have net 30 terms, 
that means at any point in time, you have basically 35 grand that you're going to owe to the distributors that you're not going to be able to pay to distributors, right? Um, on top of that, about 10% of all SKUs across all stores are falling in sales volume at any given time. A lot of that has to do with as brands are introducing new SKUs, it cannibalizes the sales of the previous SKUs, right? Um, which means that if that SKU sold out last month within 30 days, 10% of them are not going to do that this month, right? And that's basically going to cause this problem to start to compound, right? Because, you know, you're not, you need to be make sure that you're like following that trend of declining sales velocity over time, right? So all of this to be said, Overstocking is by far what we're seeing in the data, the largest cause of cash flow problems in the industry overall, uh, as opposed to like new customers coming in the store, for example. Um, knowing what is slow moving, right? Identifying that in your reporting, uh, promoting it and not restocking it <laughs> is going to help a ton in bringing that skew diversity down to match more appropriately the demand of your consumer. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if there's anything else you want to throw in. Yeah, there. no, I mean, you, you covered it pretty solid, but I mean, in the end, right, if you've got $35,000 in cash just sitting on a shelf somewhere, would you like to redeploy that or utilize that cash, right? And if you can take it from slow moving SKUs, even if you have to discount them and not sell them for what you thought you were going to, but just to get them through the system and free up that cash, that's just stuck under a mattress right now, right? And allow you to redeploy that for better moving SKUs, better margins, things like that. Um, that's it's crucial. Um, both, you know, both uh, Happy Cabbage and Blaze Insights have really good views into this. Um, it was one of those things as we spun up Blaze Insights about a year ago, we started looking at this data and we're like, holy cow, look how many thousands or tens of thousands or in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars are out there in some of these shops with SKUs that are, you know, 30, 60 days, even close to 90 plus days just sitting and um, that's that's a lot of money you can tap into and redeploy to run a more efficient operation. Awesome. Well, let's pass it over to Andrew. Let's hop into Happy Cabins, Happy Markers, and see see what this is all about. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here is not try to bore everyone with like an entire feature demo type of thing, but really focus on some of those use cases we were just talking about, right? So what I'm going to load up here is. So this is uh, Happy Marketers from Happy Cabbage Analytics We're on top of a Blaze integration. Um, let's say I want to set up marketplace recapture campaign, right? Marketplace retargeting campaign, which we just talked about, right? Um, what you can do is you can actually go in to our advanced targeting module, right? And what this gives you is access to all of the member data in Blaze has been mapped into various attributes that can let you then target down onto that specific segment, right? So what I can start to do is I can say, hey, I wanna target my regular customers who are 90 days lost, right? So three or more times, they're 90 days or more since they last purchased. Let's also say, hey, I wanna go after those that had an order size of like over like 75 bucks, right? So already what I've done is I've reduced the segment, a large, large segment, and I've reduced this down to 3,400 opted in text messaging marketing customers and 7,000 email customers, right? Which I can then go out and start to promote, right? But let's say that, again, I want to start doing something where I'm going after those marketplace customers who are falling in this bucket. So, what you can do here is you can actually go through and select what was the last place these people ordered from based on the order source that's sitting in Blades, right? So for example, what I'll do here is I'll grab Weed Maps and Leafly as two online marketplace places. And you can see here, I've now reduced this down to a very specific segment of, over, over, of overall customers to be able to bring back into the store. Let's say that I have some reason to believe that, oh, you know, I had this like $20 pre-roll campaign I was running on Weed Maps forever. And like half of these people came in through that. And so they actually have tiny average order sizes, but they were coming back to my store regularly. Let's relax that down and we can see how this opens up the segment even more. Oh, and in this case, actually these folks, let's say like, there we go, uh, brings it up to like a hundred odd customers, right? 
Now what you can do is, let's say I want to be able to start to send a regular campaign out to these customers to bring them back to the store. Let's say that I've generated a discount uh, appropriately in Blaze to go after these kinds of customers and I run and run and run an SMS campaign. You know, one thing you can do is you can leverage, like I mentioned, our GPT integration, and you could say campaign to customers who bought, you know, from a third party site, offer them $10 off if they come back into the store. Something simple like this, right? Um, you can basically set your target text length. You can also train it on previous messages that have been effective if you want. Since this is a demo, uh, I'm just going to do it something and I'm going to say, use an event. Something simple like that. You know, and you can basically have it help you generate those kinds of campaigns. And again, part of this is we pre prompt engineered it so that it's already starting to use some language that we know is going to be effective in helping to bring people back. You know, you can basically say, hey, something simple like this. Uh, and then what you could even do is schedule this out to go on a repeat basis over time, right? So you can basically say, I want to be hitting these people and reminding them about this promotion every week until the end of the year, for example, right? Uh, you can add an image um, and see the efficacy overall by going back into C campaigns and actually measuring like, hey, here's how much people came back into the store or spent after receiving that specific campaign. But again, like I mentioned, using email as the other channel, we just identified we had 100 customers in this segment, but there's 374 email addresses. Just flipping this to email campaign, writing out the email like this, and just sending that targeted email as well to help, again, have that channel already built, have that segment already built to be able to go after, right? Okay. This is just one example of how you can lever that data that's flowing through. Obviously, you have a ton of other options that you can go to, including target brands, product categories, zip codes, demographics of the consumers, customer groups that they're in, all kinds of things that can help you take that data, access it, and then use it to drive content to bring people back into the store. So uh, I'll end that here and send it back over to you, Steve. All right. Sweet. Well, we've gotten through the live demo. Um, let's get a few questions in here. Uh, looks like we've had a, a couple that have dropped in uh, just during the webinar. Let me take a look here. Um, is there any way to retarget abandoned carts? Is a question we have. Is there uh, any way in Happy Cabbage to do that, Andrew? Oh, yes. or? So we do have an abandoned cart integration that's live uh, for some e-com stuff that's connected through as well. Um, that stuff that you can use. And I believe that uh, Blaze Ecom has an email abandoned cart integration also that's already built. Out. Yeah, correct. Um, on Blaze Ecom, we do have the email abandoned cart and we're continuing to uh, to beef up the abandoned cart for uh, for those online customers to to reach back out to them. That's a great regular campaign to be able to go out as well overall to make sure that you're just getting that steady stream of folks who are falling off at the very end of the purchasing process. Nice. I uh, got another one here. How customizable is the promotions engine in Blaze? Uh, pretty heavily customizable. Um, we we have um, actually just a bunch of releases we've been doing around the promos engine, but you can you can, through the promos engine, you can create promotions to target um, brands products categories um specific price ranges you can build all sorts of different bogos or buy some of this get some of these uh free or discounted um it's it's a really really powerful promos engine that um yeah we're, we're pretty proud of uh you can also uh, coming soon we're gonna have exclusions as well so you can actually create a promo and then you can say but exclude these specific products or these specific um, pieces as well all right, we have another question here from Sonia. Are there any differences in customer behavior trends between adult use and medical customers? 
Yes. <laughs> uh, the simple answer is yes. The harder answer is, depending on your state, the ability to see it is different, right? Uh, and so, for example, what I would like to say is that there are consumers who are leveraging cannabis for medical needs who may be showing up in adult use data, and there are consumers who may be leveraging for medical needs that are clearly showing up in the medical data. I would say in California, the lines are a lot more blurred because of just how that medical program ended up rolling out. In a place like Michigan, uh, in a place like Massachusetts, like Illinois, like those kinds of places, what we see is that it's fairly easy to track the separates. Um, in general, medical have higher purchase frequency, significantly higher purchase size uh, overall is like the base level way to understand it. They're kind of like supercharged regular customers in the data that we've seen. Gotcha. Uh, I have one here on um, sort of best practices for segmentation. Um, I know we covered some of those before, but any, any you want to reiterate there, Andrew? Yeah, so segment sizes, trying to get those down to, I would say, around a 1,000 people at a time are great for the text message marketing piece to get those through uh, and get it. In terms of what are some simple, like, easy criteria? So look at your lost customers. So 90 days more since they last purchased, purchased three or more times, have an average order size over 100 bucks. Easy one right there, right? Um, what are your top brands? What are your top three brands? So is it Jeter? Is it Kiva? Is it Packstone? Whatever it is. Whenever you do a promotion with those top three brands, find everyone who's ever purchased that brand previously and communicate with them about that promotion. That's another very simple one. On average, if you communicate to someone who purchased the brand previously about a brand you have on sale, you're going to see twice 2x the conversion rate than if you purchase to someone who likes that category, but never bought that brand before, right? And then finally, category specific, right? Uh, it is very easy to select a segment of everyone who has ever purchased flour, ever, right? When you're running a flour promotion, it's a good idea to exclude people who have never purchased flour ever, right? What is, if they've never purchased flour, like you're kind of throwing that into the wasteland, right? Because a lot of those people have purchased as vapes, have purchased edibles. So using that category level of just like mutually exclusive categorization is also a great strategy for simple segmentation. Nice. I uh, got one here. Is it possible to offer a promotion to adopt prepayment? I guess uh, that's in ecom, most of them. Um, so a promo that's only available for people who uh, who are prepaid versus um, cash payments. I'll have to get back on that one. I honestly am not sure if we have that segmentation in there, but um, not a bad question at all. <laughs> we'll have to take a look. At we'll that get back see. to you. Yeah, we'll get back on that one. Cool. Uh, got one here from Alex. Is the option for sending emails already live? Um, I must, uh, oh, that must maybe... be, yeah. So we we rolled out our email integration back in August. It is live. If you'd like to activate it for your integration, uh, reach out to support at happycabbage.io. If you're in this Happy Cabbage platform, if you just click the contact support, uh, say you want to get email live and we'll get that live. Awesome. Um... I don't see any more coming in currently. Oh, we got one just, just happened. Uh, with so many segmentation options, do you still recommend only seven campaigns per month? So I should revise that. It's not seven campaigns per month. It's don't talk to the same human consumer more than seven times in a month through text messaging. Right? That's where we're seeing it's just dropping off. People are not converting right, as much. I would say you could be sending campaigns all day long, every day, right? But with segmentation, so, you know, if you have a list of, let's say, 20,000 contacts, messaging them seven times within the month, so you're going to be messaging them 140,000 overall messages, if you want to message your whole contact list, which there are plenty of reasons why people who haven't purchased in, like, years and years and years who only purchased once, like, just don't try to contact them because you're throwing money down a hole. But... um 
basically with that segmentation, splitting it into a content calendar, right? That is around categories, major brands, recapture promotions, marketplace recapture promotions. And literally by just doing it that way, you're gonna end up naturally communicating with people at that seven times a month level, right? Um, normal, yeah. I would say always going back to what is your goal, right? If your goal is to spend X amount of money and create Y amount of money, if your goal is to have a great green Wednesday, set yourself up well so your marketing strategy matches your goal as opposed to the goal just being, I want to talk to everybody every day. Awesome. Um, got one here. Is there any promo you're running to bring me on board? It's a good segue. <laughs> so um, for uh, folks who are not on the Happy Cabbage platform uh, who are listening here on this webinar, we're happy to say uh, if you use or mention promo code Happy Blaze when you reach out to our team, either by going on our website, going on uh, this partner link here, or, or emailing insights at happycabbage.io, you can get 20% off your first year of Happy Cabbage, plus 50% off our implementation fee, right? Um, we know we drive very strong results uh, in conjunction with a very strong integration we have with Blaze. Um, the thoughtfulness that they've put into the kinds of data that they're capturing and how they help and work with their integration partners really does help a ton. Uh, and so with that, like, you know, we want to talk to as many folks as possible who are interested in signing up. So again, mention Happy Blaze, you get 20% off the first year, 50% off the implementation fee. Awesome. Yeah. And from the Blaze side, look, we're really pushing e-com right now, being able to get people to have their own digital domain. Uh, we're happy to throw in a couple of months free just to get everything up and running, you know, hopefully you can get get your rankings up. So uh, we're happy to offer two months free on the e-com SaaS. So um, definitely reach out to us, blaze.me. Uh, you can even schedule a, a demo with our e-com team. They're happy to walk you through the full platform. So we'll get you covered there. Yeah, I think um, um, on that Blaze e-com, you know, that tenure is one of the very important things on SEO, right? So whenever you start, that's when Google starts to to look at you. The longer you're there with great content, the more you move up. When you day one, you're not going to be at the top of the list, no matter what. Um, Google's going to be like, are you still out there? Do you have fresh content? Is your site changing? Are your menu changing? And based on that, you're going to work your way up. So if you want really great, you know, returns coming by having your own website that is yours and is SEO optimized you should start yesterday. Um, you know, the longer you wait, the longer you push off that revenue. Definitely. And just to answer one last one here from Amanda, uh, how do we go about getting an app for our customers through Blaze? Reach out to our e-com team. They'll set you up with a demo with the app as well. Um, it's uh, it's an add-on, but we're happy to walk you through that process. And uh, a lot of people have been seeing great results from that. So appreciate the inquiry there. Um, it uh, looks like that's pretty much it for the questions. Uh, I do want to thank everybody for joining. Um, you know, stay tuned for our next webinar. It's going to be coming up in the next month or so here. We will be following up with you after this webinar with the recording so you can view it at your convenience. Uh, we'll also send along some resources, including this deck uh, that you'll be able to look at um, or share with your team. So really appreciate uh, Andrew joining us. Definitely always great to have you on, Kai. Great job for your first time. Uh, well, I hope to have you on a, on a follow-up one. We got a lot coming down the, the, the pipe here for our, our products. So um, again, if you have any questions about anything related to Blaze, reach out to us at blaze.me, uh, schedule a demo, sales at blaze.me to, to get that all set up, or you can hit up Happy Cabbage at happycabbage.io. Um, but with that, I just wish everyone uh, a great um, Green Wednesday coming up, Black Friday, and we will see you on the next one. Hopefully, we'll see you at MJ BizCon coming up. Uh, uh, is Happy Cabbage going to be at MJ BizCon, Andrew? Yeah, we'll be. We don't have a booth, but uh, we'll be walking around the floor. I'll be there in town. So uh, if you want to have a conversation, like I mentioned, reach out on the website, the email, and uh, we'll get the team set it up. Awesome. And Blaze will be there. We do have a booth. You can stop by. It's booth 6612. Um, hope to have a lot of cool stuff to show off. So 
uh, we hope to see everybody there. Bring good walking shoes. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you on the next webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Kai. Thanks, Andrew. Bye.